my name is Tori Lupinek, and you are listening to The Unclassical Musician, the podcast empowering the new generation of classical musicians to take risks and live a fulfilling life. Each week, we dive in headfirst into a topic on the minds of young professional musicians and come out the other side with a new perspective on life as an artist. Hello, hello, hello. That is how I test my Zoom microphone every day before I start teaching. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, If you are tuning in today, this episode goes live on Tuesdays, but I'm recording on Sunday. And in case you haven't heard yet, the United States presidential election was called yesterday on Saturday. And man, what a week it was. What a week it was. Um, And wow, what a finish. Oh my goodness. Whether you are pleased with the results of the election or not, we are all here. We made it. The world has not ended despite everything else that has happened so far in the year 2020. And we are just going to continue to move through the rest of this year together. We only have, we have less than two months left of 2020. And I am trying real hard to be positive about the year 2021. We're going to do it. We're going to get there together. I promise. And so last week we talked about self-care and incorporating self-care into our lives as musicians and if there was ever a time where self-care was an important thing for you to consider incorporating into your life and having compassion for yourself and for others and other people who are not like you and maybe don't look like you or live the kind of lifestyle that you live last week was the time for that so I hope that you did find some time for yourself and today we are going to be talking about scheduling for working from home for musicians and scheduling self-care into your day. So I hope that this continues to be helpful for you. So as musicians, we are very much tied into our profession, our vocation, our jobs as musicians, and it is very, very rooted deep in us personally and how we put ourselves out into the world as people. And in many ways, being a musician is a kind of lifestyle. I would almost argue that it's more of a lifestyle than an actual profession because the way we live is very different from the way normal people or muggles, as we would call them in college, live their lives. In many ways, it makes us uh, very strong people, but in many ways, I also think we end up working harder than maybe we need to because of that deeply rooted sense of self as being a musician and an artist. Our work schedule is not one that is nine to five. Our work schedule sometimes feels like it's our whole life every waking moment of the day. Correct me if I'm wrong. So as an adult, it never really dawned on me that people work nine to five jobs and they don't have to take their work home with them. Maybe I was living under a rock, but that never really occurred to me. My dad was an airline pilot. He recently retired And so he did not have a regular nine to five job either. My whole life, my whole life, he would work three or four days at a time and then be home for three or four days. But he was gone, like gone, gone, like out of the house for three or four days at a time. And then when he was home, he didn't have to bring his work home with him, generally, unless there was like a training coming up that he had to study for. He was home when he was not working. 
and my mom stayed at home. After my sister was born, my mom stayed at home. So I did not have any kind of exposure to a regular nine to five work day growing up. And then I became a musician. So there we go. Definitely not a normal nine to five kind of situation, especially when you're in music school, right? As a musician, we always bring our work home with us. Always. We always have to practice. Practicing is unpaid work. It's a requirement for our job, but it's time that we put in as an investment that we do not get paid for up front. Anyways, we hope that we get uh, an ROI on that investment later, but we don't see it up front. And there's a lot of pressure to not take time off because we're always building on what we did the day before. Myself and many other recent music grads continued to live this way after school, not taking days off if we don't have to, or maybe taking a week off in the summertime and then getting right back into it. It never really occurred to me that I was missing out on some things until I started dating an accountant who would later on become my fiance. He works a regular nine to five job. He is the first and only person I ever dated that has a regular nine to five job and he does not have to take his work home with him. Well, that was before COVID anyways. And granted, like the month or two leading up to a major tax deadline, he's working more than nine to five. But that means that there is like a pretty good chunk of the year where he's working nine to five or less during the week. It was such a shock to my system when we first started dating that he just stopped working after lunch on Friday and didn't go back to work or that he was done working and home by six o'clock and had the whole evening to do whatever he wanted and that he had time to go out on a date during the week. What? Like, <laughs> like that was so shocking to me. What I'm saying is even though our hours as musicians are pretty much the opposite of a normal nine to five job normally when like we are performers and we give performances when people are not working and that's the time that we are working. Even though our hours are different, why can't we treat our profession with a more definite work schedule? So that's what I want to talk about today, is maybe being a little more intentional with our work schedule. One thing that I really want to emphasize heavily is the importance of taking breaks. We take breaks when we practice, so we need to take breaks when we're working too. And we get breaks when we are in a large ensemble rehearsal situation also, right? Like we're not rehearsing for three hours straight. That's not how it works. Even when I was working at Starbucks, we got a 10 minute break every couple hours and then 30 minutes for a meal if you were working more than five and a half hours. Raise your hand if you are guilty of working through lunch. Yeah, me too. Last year when I was teaching flute like all day, every day, I was lucky if I got 15 minutes to eat in between kids. I mean, 15 minutes is like, it's enough time to eat, but is it enough time to really fully like turn your brain off and come away from the task at hand before having to go right back into it? I don't think it really is, at least not for me. Have you heard of the Pomodoro technique? If you have, then you know what I'm about to explain. But if you haven't, here's what the Pomodoro technique is. It's a method of segmenting your time out and giving yourself a set amount of time to accomplish a task. And it's called the Pomodoro technique for the little tomato-shaped kitchen timer that the developer used. And I discovered the Pomodoro technique when I was in college, and I have been using it to structure my practice time since then. I am a big believer in it. 
I love the Pomodoro technique. I use it every single day of my life. So I want to share it with you today. Here's how it works. You decide on a task and then you set a timer for 25 minutes. So you have 25 minutes of uninterrupted time to work on that task. When the timer goes off, in theory, you would put a check on a piece of paper. So that's one Pomodoro, okay? And then if you have fewer than four check marks or four Pomodoros, you get to take a short break. I take a five minute break because I like the um, well-segmented chunks of 30 minute times. So I work for 25 minutes and then I have a five minute break. And then you go back and you do it again. So after four Pomodoros or two hours of work, you get to take a longer break of 15 to 30 minutes. And then you reset your checkmark count back to zero and you can do it again. I like this because it does fall into nice segments of time. I like that I can have exactly 30 minutes to accomplish a task and take a break and then get right back at it. So if I say I'm going to practice for two hours, I'm going to practice for, in the end, it's going to be less than two hours because it's really 25 minutes per chunk. So 25 times four, um, but it does fall into a clock rule nicely. For me, when I'm working from home, I give myself three tasks that I'm going to accomplish that day. Three important tasks. No more and generally no less unless I know that one of those things might take more time than I would expect. This is the rule of three. So you have three tasks that you are going to accomplish that day. And then if you wanted to take it farther out, if you're a planner, you can give yourself three major tasks that you're going to accomplish that week, and then three major tasks you're going to accomplish that month, and then three major things you want to accomplish that year. That's a productivity hack for you. I have been following Chris Bailey since grad school. He is the author of the blog and the book A Life of Productivity and he's also the host of the Becoming Better podcast and he is all about living life as productively as possible so when I went to grad school and I was trying to figure out how to optimize optimize my time in the best way I got really into his stuff and he has a book too if you want to check it out I'll put links in the show notes but he is all about the Pomodoro technique and the rule of three so I will link some articles from Chris Bailey for you in the notes so now that we've talked about taking breaks and the Pomodoro technique I'm just going to real quick run through a basic day in my life since I'm working primarily from home now. I get up at 7. My alarm goes off at 7. And maybe I'll hit snooze once. I will walk the dog, have my espresso and breakfast, and maybe take a shower, put my makeup on. And I usually end up starting to work around 8.45 or 9 o'clock. And then I will work from that time until noon with breaks in the Pomodoro technique. So I will use that morning time to practice or do some administrative work like responding to emails, doing some scheduling, maybe post on social media. Or I will also incorporate exercise into that time. And yes, Exercise for me is work. I know last week I included it as part of my self-care, but I have this huge soapbox about the importance of exercise for musicians. So for me, it kind of helps me to make sure that it does happen in my day if I include it as part of my work day. And I am going to do a completely separate episode on exercise later on. But um, so yes, I will exercise in the mornings usually, and that way I get it done. And then noon till one is my lunch break. 
yes, I take a whole hour for lunch now. I did not used to do that, but I do it now. So that's 30 minutes of lunchtime. And then you have an additional 30 minutes. Maybe you actually took the time to make lunch that day. Or um, maybe I'm going to walk the dog during that time. Or maybe I have some chores to do around the house. I'll get those done during my lunch break. And then after lunch, from 1 till 2.30, I am working or practicing. And then I start teaching my after-school lessons at 2.45. And I go until 6.45. I used to teach later. I used to go all the way until 745, but kind of the similar situation to back when I was commuting to Purdue. I didn't like that I was working so late, and then I also had to commute home, and then I had to be at a high school at 720 the next morning. So my personal policy is my last lesson ends at 645. With the whole teaching online situation, I have incorporated 15-minute breaks after each lesson. So my first lesson starts at 2.45. So I have lessons that fall on the 45, on the 30, on the 15, and on the hour. I started doing 15-minute breaks because of technology. So like back in March when I started doing online lessons and we were having trouble getting the technology to work or people would get kicked off or it would freeze and then I would give people their extra time back at the end of the lesson so a 30 minute lesson would sometimes end up being 35 or 40 minutes and then that would give me enough time to get ready for my next lesson now that teaching online is um, becoming very normal next semester I'm thinking I'm probably going to cut my breaks down to 10 minutes just to see if I can maybe squeeze in an extra lesson each day. So done teaching at 645 and then seven till eight is dinner time. So I have a whole hour to make and enjoy dinner. And then from eight till 10 is self care time. And then 10 o'clock is bedtime or in bed time. So if you remember Last week, I talked about the difference between actually sleeping in bed and just being in bed before you fall asleep. So ideally, I shoot to turn the lights off at 10 o'clock. Sometimes it's 1030, sometimes it's 11. It just depends on the day, you know. Um, But if I turn the lights off at 10 and I'm able to sleep until my alarm goes off at 7, I feel great. I'm telling you, it is a wonder what a good night's sleep does when you have to work with kids all day. Am I right? Teachers, you know what I'm talking about. So that's my basic day, Monday through Thursday nowadays. Ideally, you'd also have some social time in there too. Your social time might fall into that self-care area from 8 till 10 o'clock. Or if you have friends who are on a similar schedule to you and you can chat during the day, cool, that works too. You really do need social time. For a while there, uh, last spring when I was feeling overworked, all of my social time was spent with junior high and high school kids. Which sounds weird, I know, that sounds weird. But I literally didn't have time to see my friends or talk to my friends on the phone. And then I would be exhausted from teaching all day. I had an hour ride home in the car, but I couldn't even bring myself to call people then because I was exhausted from from teaching all day and my voice was tired. You know what I mean? But it is important to have social time with people your own age. (laughs) Uh, You should also have an hour of screen break time in there too, especially if you are doing a lot of online teaching or just staring at screens all day. Maybe your screen break time is when you're making and eating dinner. That would be nice. Or maybe you're going to take an hour to read a book, not on a device, like read a physical book. That would be a good use of screen break time also. But man, two whole hours of self-care time. 
does that sound luxurious or what? I know. I was shocked when I realized that other people get that much time to themselves in the evening. Now, obviously, that's not every night for me personally, but it is my goal. If I have two whole hours of self-care time, that's plenty of time for me to wind down and actually feel ready to go to bed at a decent hour. On the weekends, I do teach a little bit on Saturdays. I have adult students that don't have time for lessons during the week, so we do Saturdays instead. So I do practice, but I tell myself as long as I do an hour, I'm fine. As long as I play for a good chunk, I'm fine. Sometimes I do more than that, just depends on how I'm feeling or if I've got a project or a recording that's coming up. But in general, I like to let my weekends be weekends when I can. I know nowadays a lot of us don't have any performing obligations on the weekends, or if we do, they're from our own home. So there's less of a time commitment there. But I encourage you to enjoy the time that you have now to let your weekends be weekends. There'll be a time when it's not like that anymore. And you'll be working more, and you'll be making more money, and you'll be feeling more musically fulfilled, which is great. But sometimes I personally struggle with the idea that as a performer, your schedule is the opposite of muggle schedules, right? And as someone who is going to marry a non-musician, if I had a salaried performing gig, my weekend and his weekend would not match up, which is something strange to think about. But anyways, if we throw it back to grad school for a moment, for those of you who are recent grads, generally my structured days would end with me being productive up until like one hour before I had to go to bed. In other words, very little to no self-care time, which I really don't think is super healthy to do that like every day of the week because it, like I said before, it takes time to wind down after work. It takes time for your brain to go out of work mode and into at home mode into, ah, done for the day. Ah, getting ready for bed. Do you know what I mean? And it's really hard to fall asleep right away if your brain is still in work mode. I know that you know that you're, it's difficult to fall asleep when your brain has other things going on, especially last week and everything in the last month or so. I personally have been having some trouble sleeping. So just keep in mind that difference between sleep time and in bedtime. If you know you're having trouble sleeping, you might want to consider spending more time in bed. It might increase your chances of actually getting more sleep. I have created a sample work from home schedule PDF that you can download for free. I'll put the link in the show notes, but I have to say I can't take credit for it. I kind of re- structured it from what I remember from an article that I had read over the summer when I was struggling with a work from home schedule. I tried really hard to find that article back and I just could not find it. Maybe it was like from Audition Cafe or an Angela Miles Beeching article. If you take a look at it and you're like, oh, that looks familiar, let me know where you found it from so I can give that person credit because I don't want to take credit for it. Um, But I'll post a link in the show notes, and I'll also post it on my Instagram and on the Unclassical Musicians Facebook group so that y'all can take a look at it. Maybe it'll inspire you to change it up a little bit this week. If you are struggling to find a good work schedule that works for you and also still keeps you feeling productive during the day, Feel free to ask for some tips from other listeners on the Unclassical Musicians Facebook group. And be sure to follow me on Instagram at Tori Lupinek Flutist for more scheduling tidbits sprinkled throughout this week. If you have time, I would really appreciate it if you would rate, review, and subscribe to the Unclassical Musician on Apple Podcasts. 
I know it takes two seconds of your busy day, but it really means a lot to me. I would really appreciate it if you took a couple of seconds to do that. And if you feel so inclined, maybe share this episode with someone who needs to hear this this week. Maybe they're struggling with structuring their day, or maybe they're feeling a little burnt out from teaching online. Maybe this can help. On deck for next week is mindset. Oof, something I've personally struggled with a lot and still struggle with like every day. We're going to talk it out. In the meantime, have fun reevaluating your schedule this week and keep killing it out there. You're doing great. <laughs> <laughs>